Are you struggling to visualize what a great dissertation or thesis should look like? Are you keen to learn about what is expected from a top great dissertation or thesis? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the six C's of academic writing excellence, a framework that allows you to understand what is expected from you and eventually achieve a higher grade. I'm Dr. Miguel Moital. I am the founder and chief content developer of the Dissertation Academy, an academy that is all about sharing unique tips and tools to help you write a better dissertation. So if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time we publish a new video. Today's video is about the six C's of academic writing excellence. So what are the six C's all about? A well-communicated dissertation needs to address certain expectations. And while there are different ways of expressing those expectations, some of them are not easy to understand. So I've developed a simple and intuitive way of expressing what is expected from a dissertation. The six C's are a benchmark against which to evaluate any dissertation, including yours. So it's very important that you address them because your dissertation grade depends on the extent to which your dissertation performs in each of the six C's. So I invite you to watch the video, maybe even more than once, so that you can fully understand the scope of each C. The six C's are like a jigsaw puzzle. They are confined, corroborated, critical, coherent, concise, and captivating. When you put these individual pieces together, you will have formed a clear picture of your research. Let's look at each C individually so that you can do better in your dissertation. Let's imagine the following situation. You go to a bookstore and see a recipes book entitled, for example, Brazilian food. You're keen to try some of the country's recipes at home. And you get home, check the book's content more carefully, and eventually realize that half the book is about recipes from other countries. How would you feel in such situation? Probably that you've been fooled because the content does not reflect the title. This anecdotal example represents well what Confined is about. Throughout your dissertation, you will be making many promises to the reader. Like in the Brazilian food book, the first one is on the cover page when you write your title. This immediately prepares the reader for what is coming ahead. And from that point onwards, the reader is going to expect to read about what you promised to write about as given by the title. Your promise doesn't stop here. It continues in the form of aim and objectives. Once you've come up with an appropriate aim and objectives, one important idea that I share with my students is the need to stick to the promise. By this I mean stay within the boundaries defined by the title, the aim and the objectives of the dissertation. Deviating from the direction provided by this is likely to bring your mark down, simply because you're not keeping to the promise. Let's move to the second C, corroborated. One of the critical elements in writing a good dissertation is the ability to produce strong arguments. This means that whatever you say needs to be confirmed or supported by appropriate evidence. I often say to my students that I'm not interested in their opinion. I'm interested in their substantiated opinion. We all have opinions about most things in life, and, and that's fine. However, in research, what we are trying to develop is a substantiated or informed opinion. When you develop a substantiated opinion, you know enough to offer an in-depth knowledge about your chosen topic. The difference between an opinion and a substantiated opinion is that in the latter, the facts or ideas you are trying to persuade the reader to accept are based on evidence that was produced following a structured scientific approach. In other words, what you are saying is based on a solid argument. If this explanation is a bit difficult to understand at this stage, check out the video about writing strong arguments that appears in the description below. Time to move to the third C, critical. One of the main skills required to produce an excellent dissertation is critical thinking. You're probably one of the many students who've been told at least once that your work is not critical enough. So what is critical thinking? Let's look at the formal definition. 
Critical thinking is the process of actively conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication. That's a lot of information in a single definition. So time to break it down into smaller parts to make sense of it. The first idea that comes across is that critical thinking manifests itself in many forms, including conceptualizing, analyzing, and evaluating. So if you want to be a better critical thinker, you have to become familiar with how to go about doing this. Do you know what analysis entails? Do you know what evaluation is about? Secondly, based on the definition, we can also conclude that critical thinking is about how you deal with the information you obtain. For example, from secondary information gathered through a literature search or primary data collected as part of your interviews or questionnaires. Finally, the definition also suggests that critical thinking is about your thought process, mainly that you're expected to actively engage with rather than passively absorb information. In other words, it assumes that you do something with the information rather than accept it with little to no questioning or modification. Critical evaluation often requires a focus on the why. I always tell my students that the most important word in their course is why. If you are dealing with the whys, you are scratching under the surface and you are exploring the principles or reasons that explain a phenomenon. This is essential if you want to change an outcome or result. When doctors want to prescribe a treatment to solve someone's health problem, their ultimate concern is not with the symptom, but with what could be causing it. The same principle applies to much of the work that you will be doing as a student. In the case of your dissertation or thesis, most of you will have chosen a topic because there is some problem in the world that you want to make a modest contribution to resolve. You can only do this if your research focuses on analyzing the problem, and more specifically on analyzing the causes of the problem. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified of new videos. Time to look at coherent, our fourth C. In a nutshell, coherence is about good organization. Delivering a well-organized dissertation involves a number of considerations, what to include and exclude, the emphasis given to both topics and arguments, and the order in which the information should appear. Achieving high levels of coherence also requires adopting two principles. First, consistency of language, writing, style and structure, with this having to be appropriate to the area being covered. The second principle is purposefulness. Purposefulness is about explaining the structure and flow of ideas, and is one skill that I actively try to foster in my students. It requires showing an awareness of why you are writing it in that way. In summary, it's about demonstrating that you did things purposefully, rather than by chance or simply out of instinct. The fifth C is concise. Being concise is about effectiveness and efficiency in communication. In more specific terms, it involves providing as much information as possible, which is effectiveness, in as fewer words as possible, which is efficiency. It is a balancing act because sometimes to be effective we have to use too many words, which is not efficient, and if we are too efficient, that is, we use too few words, we may end up not being very effective, in this case saying all that we should say. You can be concise by going straight to the point and removing duplicate or redundant ideas and information. Unless you are a very gifted writer, addressing the C requires substantial efforts in writing and rewriting. That's why I always say to my students, first drafts are never good. I mean, they are never good enough as a final submission. It is only by writing and rewriting that your dissertation can become concise. By captivating, we mean being able to capture and hold the attention of the reader. This means that the captivating dissertation will evoke the interest and the attention of the reader. In simple terms, it's about instilling in the reader the thought of, I want to keep reading this. Captivating is a combination of the other C's. After all, a dissertation that is not concise and critical is unlikely to be captivating, but also includes those elements that, if not there, 
could affect the ability to create and retain a high level of interest in the reader. These elements include presentation and formatting aspects such as a professional not lazy look, font size and type, margins, quality of the tables and font, just to name a few. Getting these formatting elements right can sometimes be difficult, because each reader will have his or her preferences. These six characteristics of a well-communicated dissertation or thesis are not mutually exclusive. By the way, mutually exclusive means completely independent. For example, concision is likely to influence how captivating the dissertation is. Hence the jigsaw puzzle highlighting the importance of considering the six C's together. In summary, whenever you look back at your dissertation, these are the broad questions that you should ask at all times. Is what I am saying confined to the objectives of the dissertation? Is what I'm saying corroborated by appropriate evidence? Is what I'm saying written in a critical, coherent, concise and captivating way? Asking these questions along the way will greatly help you to write a better dissertation. I hope you have enjoyed learning about the six C's and I would love to hear your feedback. What value have you found in learning about the six C's? What parts would you like to be explained further? Let me know in the comments and I'll try to comment and maybe even do videos around the topics where you would like further clarification. Most of the other videos in this channel are about sharing with you unique tips and tools so that you can address each of the six C's of academic writing excellence. You can see the six C's as the target and all the tips and tools as what needs to be done in order to hit as close to the bullseye as possible. So if you want to learn about these great tips and tools and enhance the likelihood of doing a better dissertation, tap the screen on the right hand side, but also check the description below for more videos related to the six C's. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Dissertation Academy YouTube channel as this will help me to grow the channel. That's all for now. See you in the next video.